Welcome back. This is our fourth video of our OpenStack MAS install. Uh, on this video, we're going to be talking about the network configuration and either wake. Uh, these are two very important things uh, for the MAS install and the OpenStack install. You have to get them correct. And we'll actually be reconfiguring network a couple of times during this process, but for now, let's get started so that we can do. Uh, we, need, we need to set up our static interfaces and uh, get DNS working so it starts doing lookups to the outside world. Uh, so last video we, Im we imported the boot images. The boot images have completed. You can see from inload that there's no network traffic. So we'll just control C that. Now let's take a look at our current network configuration. I have config-a. Uh, so ETH0 is still set to the DHCP value uh, that we set up during the install, that it grabbed during the install. And ETH1 isn't set up for anything. There's no IP, no broadcast. So we need to set both of these interfaces to static and uh, so that they call the same IP every time. So use your favorite text editor. I always use nano and we're going to edit e slash etc slash network slash interfaces. Okay and you can see down here uh, eth0 is the only thing in here and it says it's a DHCP. So we want to set that to static so it never changes its IP and then we, we have to set its address and we are just going to leave it to that address but now we know that it's going to pull this address every time it boots up that mask will be slash 24 to allow 255 addresses gateway is something we're going to talk about a couple of times but for now we're going to set it to the routed network the internet facing network gateway and DNS names are also something we're going to change later. Maybe. <laughs> so in the name servers, just put your internet facing router in there for now. Now we need to set up ETH1 to be static. And ETH1 is going to be part of our private network. can only have one gateway per machine so we don't need any of that we're going to set him to 10.1.1.100 and set his net mask so we've already got DNS a name server and a gateway up top so we don't need any of that info <clears throat> for the second interface so Control X to exit, and he will ask you if you'd like to save it. And you hit Y for save, and what file name you want to save it? Just save it, save it to the same file name. Hit enter. Okay, so now we have our both interfaces configured. They have not. Let's do IF config. You can see that this hasn't changed yet. You can do restart networking. It's just easier to reboot. So let's reboot it now. This machine reboots really quickly so it's no big deal just to go ahead and let it reboot okay let's go ahead and reset our terminal and that's not the password or that's not the user ID Okay, open up some screens. So I have config, which is that's not right. 
So now you can see that we have, this didn't change, but it's static now. So that it won't change ever. And our new interface is uh, 10.1.1.100. Okay, now that we have that set up, let's go back to the Maz GUI and we need to configure our cluster. So we have a boot image available. Let's go to clusters and take a look at the cluster. So if we go to the cloud documentation, what does he tell us? Okay, he wants us to set up an SSH key, and, and I guess we, we can do that. So, this is the cluster configuration. You can see it only has one interface down here. Uh, let's go to networks. And he only has one interface down there. So let's add a network and we're going to call him eth1 maz-eth1 this is the private network his IP is 10.1.1.100 0 no VLAN tagging uh, his gateway uh, is going to be the gateway of this box. So, uh, eventually he's going to route out this box, but right now his gateway is the gateway of this box. And his DNS server is also this box, because this box will be a DNS server for the private network. Let's add that network. Okay. Uh, that's good. Now let's go back to clusters and edit this the master cluster that's on this box. And we're going to add an interface. And let's hold on a second. Let's take a look. What's he call it? He just calls it ETH. Okay. So ETH1. ETH1. And he is going to be managed. Uh, DHCP and DNS. He's going to serve both of those from this server. At 10.1.1.100. Broadcast is the last IP in the range. It's always broadcast is always 255. So we'll punt that in there. Uh, the router again for this interface. It's this box. We're going to do the routing from here. Uh, dynamic ranges and static ranges for DHCP. This box is going to serve DHCP, so we need to give them uh, give it a range of addresses that that it can use. Uh, I like to start the dynamic low, so let's do. One oh one, and then we'll give this one. 150. We're never going to use 50 IP addresses, but it's good to have room. And then we'll start the static right above that. Okay. And let's see the interface. All right, now we have a managed, a cluster managed network interface on this cluster. So let's switch gears for a second here. Uh, actually, let's just let's make sure that we can do DNS lookups outside to the outside world now that we've configured all this stuff. Uh, maybe we can't. Yeah, we can. Okay. And you can get an address. You can look up Google. So that's good. Uh, DNS is working to the outside world anyway. Uh, 
and we can ping outside. But we can't ping. We can ping inside this box to the new interface. So he is working on the other side of this box. So that's good to know. <clears throat> Let's switch gears a little bit and, and do SSH keys. So you need an SSH key on the MAS server, a private one and a public one. And you need, to, you need to generate a private and a public pair. So the private one will set on this server. The public one will set on any server that you want to allow this server to be able to SSH to without a password. So when you spin up nodes on Maz, uh, he automatically hands him this Maz, the software hands him this public key that he can use so that we can talk back and forth uh, without a login handshake. So we need to create an SSH key to allow this. So just as your regular user, uh, do SSH dash keygen dash T R S A. And this will generate a key if you punch it in right. Okay, and just hit enter here. It's that's telling you where the file it's gonna save it to. Um, I already have one, we're gonna overwrite it. Uh, we're to, we don't need a passphrase, it's, this is an internal network, don't need one. Okay, the key has been generated. Now, let's cat that key file that it created so that we can look at its contents. You want the public key, dot pub. And there's the key, there's the key that it generated, our public key. So let's copy that and go back to the Maz GUI and add an SSH key. Uh, it is in the root preferences. SSH key, add one. Let's stick that in there, paste it, uh, hit add key, and uh, actually I'm going to take both of these out because we had multiples. You only, you only need one. You can have multiples. It doesn't hurt anything, but just for the, the sake of this video, we only need one. Okay, now we have our key. Now Maz can talk to the nodes that it needs to and hand them this public key. So we're good there. Now we need to talk about either wake. And first thing we do is let's install either wake. sudo apt install Okay, since we're not in a data center and we don't have fancy power equipment and and all the controls and things that they would, we are going to use either wake to wake up our nodes to and when Maz come Maz spins up nodes, he shuts them down until he needs to use them. Well, how he wakes them back up is with wake on LAN. So your nodes need to be compatible, the hardware needs to be compatible with Wake on LAN. And we have to have either Wake installed to be able to send them the magic packet to wake up whenever we need them to. So either Wake and Mass, they use both programs called Wake on LAN and then also another program called Either Wake. Uh, the problem with Wake on LAN, it tries to use Wake on LAN first uh, by default. The problem with Wake on LAN is, is you can't tell Wake on LAN to use a specific interface to send the magic packet. Since our private network is on ETH1, we always need the magic packet to be sent out ETH1 because the other, the other network isn't routable. It's not going to route that packet back to the node that we need it to go to. So it has to go out ETH1. Unfortunately, in the MAS install, you have to make a custom um, change to get this to work. And because there's an ETH template, and I found it out there on the forums, I'll put a link to this. But so you install either wake, and then you have to edit this template that it uses. <clears throat> And we'll do sudo nano and edit this template. This template 
I don't even... This is just a simple bash shell script that tells it what MAC address and what power change it wants it to do. Uh, I don't even want it to attempt wake on LAN because if he attempts it and he sends it, then he's, this script's going to die out. So we're going to comment out the wake on LAN portion. We just wanted to use either wake. Uh, and either wake has to be run as sudo. So we need this script to run it as sudo. Uh, and we also need this script to always run it from our eth1 interface. So you add a dash i eth1. So this is to say we're going to run either wake. We're going to send the magic packet out out interface eth1 so we make sure that we send it to the private network where our nodes exist so let's control x to leave y to save enter to save the file name now since we added this at sudo you sudo you have to have a password unless you're on the sudoers list so we need to add either wake to the sudoers list and this is it so let's change directory to slash etc slash sudoers let's take a look at what's in there Maz uses this 99 sudoers list so we need to add either wake to this guy so let's nano Maz sudoers and we're gonna put it we're just gonna add him to the bottom of this list let's since they've already done it for us, let's grab it. So, maz all, no password needed to this directory for this either wake execution. So, hit X, Y, enter. And we're good. Uh, either wake is installed. It's going out the correct interface. Uh, it, they've been added to the sudoers list so he can run the command successfully. Uh, I think that is all we need to do for this video. It's getting kind of long again. Uh, next video, we're going to be spinning up nodes to add to Maz. Uh, more networking conversations. Uh, we're just going to keep going down this list of things to do. Uh, so I'll see you in the next video.